Action. Welcome to the Late Night Show, your monthly reminder that while you were doom scrolling, robots learned to do your job. Google built a quantum computer that breaks encryption, and OpenAI gave everyone AI agents, which sounds great until you realize that your AI assistant might be better at your job than you are. October in AI, absolute madness. Amazon casually announced that they're replacing 600,000 workers, like it's a software update. Google decided to cure cancer on the side, and someone put a T-Rex costume on a robot dog just to watch people panic. You know, casual Tuesday stuff. So tonight, we're cutting through the noise. These are the 11 drops from October that actually mattered. Let's get into it. Neo by One X Tech. One X Technologies just dropped Neo, and this might be the first humanoid robot that does not look like it is constantly about to fall over. Neo S56 weighs about 30 kilograms and can carry up to 70 kilograms, which means it is stronger than your gym buddy who only does bicep curls. It uses embodied AI trained through real-world teleoperations. Now, what does that even mean? Basically, instead of coding every single movement, they had humans control the robot remotely and. Neo learned just by watching. It's like teaching someone to drive by letting them watch you parallel park 10,000 times. Except that this actually works. The vision? Neo in your home doing chores. Folding laundry, cleaning dishes, maybe judging your lifestyle choices. Neo is retailing at $20,000. And if you don't want to pay that upfront, you can even buy a subscription for about $500 a month. And this goes out in 2026 in the US and 2027 worldwide. And this isn't just about vacuuming. If robots can genuinely operate in human spaces, we're talking logistics, elder care, disaster response, and yeah, probably replacing a few jobs along the way. The robot revolution isn't really coming. It's already here, and it just learned how to fold your socks. Next up, Google's Quantum Echoes. Google just dropped Quantum Echoes, and it might be the nerdiest flex in computing history. But stick with me, because this one's actually wild. Here's the problem. For years, Quantum computers have been like that overachieving classmate who claims that they aced the most impossible exams, but they won't show you their results and work. They'll be like, trust me, bro, I got it. Cool, but can you really prove that? Because if a classical computer can't solve the problem, how can you check if the quantum computer actually got it right? It's like asking your dog to fact check your taxes. Quantum Echoes basically says, okay, enough trust falls. It's a benchmark that lets quantum computers solve problems and prove that they solved them correctly. The quantum computer shows its work and the math checks out. Willow absolutely crushed it. Solve the problem in minutes that would take classical computers probably years in order to solve. And the results are instantly verifiable. This isn't, we think it worked. It's proven measurable quantum advantage. But why does this matter? Encryption algorithms sweating. Pharmaceutical simulations accelerating. Governments with cybersecurity budgets re-evaluating everything. The quantum age also isn't just coming. It just proved that it's right here and it brought the receipts with it. Next up, ChatGPT Atlas. OpenAI just launched ChatGPT Atlas, and it's not just another browser. It's a browser with a brain, finally. Atlas is a web browser built around ChatGPT. Instead of juggling 47 tabs and copy-pasting like a maniac, your AI just watches what you're doing and helps you. Researching a topic, it summarizes articles. Comparing products, it builds you a comparison table. Planning a trip, it pulls info from multiple tabs and organizes it for you. The kicker, it understands context across your entire browsing session. You can basically chat with your browsing history. You're not starting fresh every time. Atlas remembers exactly what you were looking at, which is more than what most of us can say about our own browsing habits, to be very honest. This is what AI native actually means. Not AI bolted onto a browser, but a browser designed from the ground up with AI as a part of the workflow. It's like having a research assistant who never closes your tabs, never judges your 3 a.m. Wikipedia rabbit holes, and never loses track of what you were doing. Browsers have basically been the same for about 20 years. And Atlas came and said, what if they weren't? And honestly, once you start using a browser that helps, going back feels like using a flip phone. Next up, Unitree Go To. China's Changzhou Dinosaur Park just introduced a new attraction. Basically, what if we made Jurassic Park? 
but with actual robots. They basically dressed a unitary go-to robot in a baby triceratops costume and let it roam the park. And it's interacting with everyone there. The go-to uses AI and sensors to react to visitors, wag its tail and move naturally. And kids, they're losing their minds. Adults are pulling out their phones. Everyone's pretty much living their childhood dream of petting a dinosaur that does not eat them. The go-to already runs at about 11 miles an hour and also does backflips. But put a dinosaur costume on it and suddenly it's not just a robot, it's an experience. This is the future of theme parks. Animatronics are expensive, stationary and they're constantly breaking down. Robot dogs on the other hand, they move freely react in real time and interact with crowds in ways a mounted T-Rex head never could. Kids don't want to look at the fake dinosaurs behind glass. They actually want to interact with them. And at around $1,500 per robot, parks can actually afford multiple units. Chang Zhu just proved that the line between robotics and entertainment is blurring. Robot dinosaurs just became the new standard. Next up, VO 3.1. Google dropped VO 3.1, an updated version of their already solid VO 3 model. Think of it as VO3, but with a fresh haircut and better lighting. VO3.1 generates videos up to two minutes long in 4K. A huge leap from earlier models that maxed out at about 10 seconds or maybe like even 30 seconds. It handles motion, lighting and physics better. So things actually move like they exist instead of melting into each other like a Salvador Dali painting. There's also style transfer. Want your AI short film to look like Wes Anderson directed it? Pretty much done. Want it to look like a 1980s VHS tape? Also done. Want it to look like your uncle shot it on a camcorder at Thanksgiving? Probably that too. Video generation is pretty much collapsing the cost of content creation. Need B-rolls, product demos, a proof of concept without hiring a film crew? VO 3.1 does all of that. What does this mean for Hollywood though? Well, Hollywood isn't dead yet, but it's definitely ordering another round of drinks at the bar. Next up, we have XBAT, a crazy fighter jet. Shield AI just unveiled the XBAT, an AI-powered fighter jet that flies autonomously. No remote pilot, no human in the loop, just pure AI making split-second decisions at supersonic speeds. Top Gun just became top algorithm. The XBAT uses Shield AI's HiveMind AI, originally designed for drones in GPS-denied environments. HiveMind has flown over 500,000 autonomous missions, so it's actually battle-hardened. The jet can fly in swarms, coordinate with other jets and aircrafts, and also make tactical decisions faster than any human pilot. And because there's no cockpit, no life support, and no ejection seat, it's lighter, faster, and cheaper to make. It's basically a missile that can change its mind. The implications? Pretty terrifying. Autonomous fighter jets mean air superiority without risking pilot lives. But it also means warfare at machine speed. Decisions in milliseconds, no hesitation, no coffee breaks, no let me think about this. Shield AI does say that HiveMind is designed with safety and human oversight. But once these things are deployed, well, safety protocols and active war zones have a complicated relationship. The future of warfare just got a lot faster and a lot scarier. Next up, Amazon automates 600,000 jobs, casually. Amazon announced plans to automate 600,000 warehouse jobs over the next few years. And the internet collectively went, wait, what? The robots use AI-powered computer vision to identify products, navigate warehouses, and optimize workflows in real time. They don't need bathroom breaks, they don't call in sick, and they don't unionize. From a business point of view, it's a no-brainer. But from a human point of view, it's a little complicated. Amazon says they'll retain workers for higher skill roles, which sounds great until you realize higher skill roles often means fewer roles overall. And this isn't just Amazon. If Amazon pulls it off, every competitor will follow. Automation isn't a question of if anymore, it's a question of how fast. Maybe this finally forces an uncomfortable conversation about universal basic income and what work even means when robots do the heavy lifting. Or maybe we all just become TikTok influencers, who knows? Next up, Google C2S. Google unveiled C2S, which stands for Cell to Sentence, an AI model that predicts cancer survival rates by analyzing cell images. And it is scarily good. C2S analyzed millions of samples and can spot patterns invisible to the human eye. In trials, it outperformed traditional methods for predicting patient outcomes in cancers like lung, breast, and colorectal. Better treatment plans, earlier interventions, potentially lives saved. But here's where it gets actually interesting. C2S doesn't just predict survival. It explains why. 
it highlights which cellular features are driving its predictions so that doctors can actually understand the AI's reasoning instead of blindly trusting a black box. This is pretty much the kind of AI we should be excited about. Not because it's flashy, but because it's solving a real life or death problem. AI isn't just writing your emails anymore, it's reading your cells. Up next, we have Agent Kits. OpenAI just launched Agent Kits and it's basically saying to platforms like N810, we see what you're doing, and we are coming for you. Agent kits are pre-built templates for creating AI agents that performs tasks autonomously. Want an AI that schedules meetings? There's a kit for it. Want one that monitors your inbox? Well, there's a kit for it. Want one that finally responds to your mom's texts? Probably not yet, but give it some time. I'm just kidding. The difference? NA10 is about automation connecting APIs and executing predetermined steps. Agent Kit, on the other hand, is about reasoning. Agents that think through the problem and adapt. NA10 executes instructions, Agent Kit executes intelligence, or at least tries to. Agent Kit comes with Chat Kit, a polished conversational UI that makes NA10's chat look like a high school coding project. But NA10 actually wins on flexibility. It's open source, supports hundreds of AI models, and has 600 plus integrations. Agent Kit locks you into just OpenAI's ecosystem. The smart move is to use both. Agent Kit for customer-facing chat agents and NA10 for backend automation. The bottleneck isn't having AI agents anymore. It's knowing what to build with them and how to use these tools in the best way. Next up, we have Deloitte's half a million dollar AI blunder. Deloitte charged the Australian government 440,000 Australian dollars for a report on their welfare system. Plot twist, the report was written by AI, and nobody checked if the AI was lying. Sydney University researcher Chris Rudge read it and immediately thought, wait a second, fake citations, books that don't exist, a made-up quote from a federal court judge. He found 20 errors. Deloitte eventually admitted, though, that they used OpenAI's models in order to write parts of the report. They then quietly uploaded a corrected version over a weekend, classic, added a disclosure about using AI, and agreed to refund the final payment. But get this, they still insist the substance of the report is fine. Translation, the evidence was fake, but trust us on the conclusions. Lol. Senator Barbara Pocock said Deloitte misused AI and committed errors that would get a first-year university student in deep trouble. She wants a full refund. Although Deloitte says that the matter is resolved, which is consultant speak for, please stop talking about this. The lesson, if you're charging half a million dollars for a government report, maybe don't let the robot write it unsupervised. And finally, Google's $15 gift to India. Google just announced a $15 billion investment to build an AI hub in Vizag, India. This is Google's largest investment outside the United States ever, which is a big deal, unless you count all the money they spent on free snacks in Mountain View. The hub includes a one gigawatt data center campus, subsea cable infrastructure, and clean energy sources. Google Cloud CEO Thomas Kurian called it the largest AI hub we are investing in anywhere in the world outside of the US. The project is expected to create up to 180,000 jobs. Google CEO Sundar Pichai described Vizag as a beautiful coastal town that's growing fast, which is tech CEO speak for we found talent, infrastructure, and all of it at reasonable costs. This is basically Google playing 4D chess, with US-China tensions heating up and India pushing Made in India products. Dropping $15 billion in India's backyard is both strategic as well as smart. The global AI race isn't just Silicon Valley anymore. It's officially everywhere. And that's a wrap on October. The month robots dressed up as dinosaurs, quantum computers proved that they're smarter than us, and Deloitte learned the hard way that ChatGPT does not fact check itself. We watched Amazon replace 600,000 workers with a press release. Google dropped $15 billion on a beach town in India. And OpenAI hand everyone the tools to build AI agents. Which is great, until you realize your competition is now a solo dev with Claude doing 80% of the work. The pace is not slowing down and the future is not waiting. And honestly, it's getting harder to tell if we are building cool stuff or just automating ourselves out of relevance. But hey, at least the robots can fold laundry now. So there's that. My name is Sridev and this was The Late Night Show. See you next month. Same chaos, better robots and hopefully fewer AI written government reports. Stay sharp, stay skeptical and for the love of God, fact check your AI. Good night.